The protesters are down the corner as we motherfucking speak. It's Wednesday, the 3rd of June. Get your shit together. The Church of What's Happening Now is brought to you by Blue Chew. Listen, guys, remember when you fucking woke up with a dick that could fucking, you could hit somebody in the head with these fucking cops? You, know, you see these cops, the batons? You remember when your dick was a fucking baton? The good old days when you could fucking wake up with dick and you had like 10 fucking hard-ons a day. But as you get older, you get, you, your wood starts to get a little, little weak, okay? Uncle Joey's got the fix. You ready for this one? Blue Chew. It's the first chewable dick pill, which means it works fast. Blue Chew has the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. This isn't horny goat weed you get from fucking some dude with an ACDC shirt on at some fucking liquor store. This is science, cocksuckers. <laughs> so do me a favor. BlueChew.com. Blue is running a special offer for the family, all right? What, we, what we're going to do is bluechew.com, get your first shipment free. Again, that's bluechew. Like, get your first shipment free when you're pressing code church, and, ju- and it only costs $5 for shipping, okay? Get your first shipment free when you press in code church, C H U R C H, and you just pay $5 for, for shipping. Again, that's blue. Like the color of your fucking dick when you don't have no pussy for a month. And and chew. Like chewing fucking bubblegum and slinging dick. All right? So I thank them for sponsoring the church. And I thank you guys that have... Listen, even if you don't have suffer from dead dick. Let's say you're going to give a, a girl a stab. And you don't want to show up. You want to show up with the best dick you can show up with. Right or wrong? Am I lying to you here? What the fuck are we talking about? Do me a favor. Go to bluechew.com right now. And get your first shipment free when you're pressing code church. Just pay the $5 shipping. Who's better than you? The sling dick. I'm doing you a fucking favor, cocksucker. Kick this motherfucking mule Lee. Oh, shit. It all starts fucking today, all right? No more fucking excuses. This is the year of the fucking soldier. We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker. Oh shit. Oh shit. It's the looters edition. What's going on, you bad motherfuckers? A lot is going on in the country. But this is an hour for you to relax, sit back, scratch your nuts, smoke a joint with your Uncle Joey. And that's it, and that's that. Why the anxiety? Why the fucking, you know, turn that fucking TV off. There's nothing but fucking bullshit on that fucking TV. Number one, I want to thank somebody that hooked us up last week, fucking big time. And I keep forgetting because I'm a fucking sack of shit. My main man over there fucking, uh... Your oh, you boy. The, the sandwiches? The sandwiches. Yeah, uh, Uncle Paulie's? Uncle it? fucking Paulie's in Beverly Hills and downtown. I checked in with him yesterday to see if anything had happened to a store in Beverly Hills. He said he would get back to me. He fucking hooked us up. That's my favorite fucking deli in this area. The spicy Italian is tremendous. He brought Steve Simone's uh, uh, broccolini with fucking eggplant. I mean, I don't like eggplant, but it looked fucking tremendous. Lee had the chicken chip- palm. Listen, oh. guys, if you're looking for a deli in Beverly Hills, go see my man out of respect. He's been feeding people throughout this whole fucking calamity. Feeding people, making fucking sandwiches. All right, so listen. I give respect to who fucking deserves respect. What's the name of the deli? Give hit it again. Uncle Polly's. Uncle fucking Polly's. That's it, and that's that. So anyway, let me th- let me talk. To you. There's a lot going on. Oof. And everybody's got their take on what the fuck they got to say. And I got one thing to tell you. Okay, there's people who are doing safe protesting. I'm not against protesting. It's your First Amendment. Go with it if you're happy. But then there's people out there that are just doing plain crime. Those people that are doing plain crime, if you look at what they're, what they're doing is, they have fucked up hearts. You know how I know? Because I was there. They're confused. They're young. You know, I, I, I submitted a, an, an audio story last week, the audio boom, the, day, the night my heart went sour. It was like December 29th of 1979, like a month and a half after my mom died. It hit me. And I went up against the world. What does that mean? That I stepped on a bee. I stepped, if I saw a car, a cat on the street, I would run it over. Not that I ran over a cat, but I had that anger inside my soul. And that anger is the same anger those protesters have that are 
breaking shit and thief and shit. That's not making a difference, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. I just want you to understand that, you know, listen, there's good and bad, and this was happening is a bad situation. The only people who can bring good to us is us, you know, by doing the right thing, by being courteous, by being nice to other people, shit like that. This has got to end, you know. Uh, you can't write this fucking script. <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's very scary, but it's... You can't write this fucking script. All you white people wanted the apocalypse. You remember? <laughs> All you white people wanted to be zombies. Get ready. It looks like fucking Zombieville at night. I mean, they destroyed Fifth Avenue. They destroyed Soho. They destroyed Beverly Hills. But listen, this gives everybody a chance to rebuild. I told you this was going to be a weird time in our lives because it's, it's going to make us realize what's important and what's not important. This is, we've been... This is a catastrophe, but at the same time, it's a blessing. It shows you what you got to deal with. What the fuck do you, are you really made of? This is what this shows you. And listen, you're talking to a guy who for the first three weeks of this thing was crushed. I was falling apart at the seams. I was just holding myself up together. I made a decision that as the man of the house, I had to keep like a fucking nice face on to not worry everybody. Because that's what the man of the house does. That's, that's, that's what a man does. You know, those protesters you see, the ones that are going down there and they're being whatever, they're men. They're men. Some, you know, the cop that got on his knee, they're all men. That's what men fucking do. The other thing, they're just children. When I was being a thief and looting, I never looted it at a riot. Let's get something clear. But I looted in life. It's the same fucking difference. And it, I, I was lashing out because somebody had wronged me. Somebody had wronged me. Life had wronged me, so now I had to wrong everybody else. That's the game plan. You know, man, uh, it lasted in my heart from 1980 to 1991 when I got into comedy in 92 because to, to spread comedy and laughter, you can't have that anger in your fucking heart. So, and I could sit here and tell you that I went to a psychiatrist and tell you that they put me on Zoloft and tell you that, man, I, we all know what the answer is, okay? I'm a Catholic, I'm a Santeria guy, and I respect Buddhism and karma, and I believe in all those things. And I'll tell you, you know, I meditate. You guys look at me with my little red helmet on, and my faggy helmet. Well, at the end of all my little workouts, when I'm stretching out, the last thing I do is I, I do the whole thing. I take my shoes off. You know, I, my posture, I breathe through my nose, and I focus on my third eye, and I listen for birds chirping. I listen for the birds. That's what I focus on, my breathing and the birds chirping. And that's what's kept me together throughout this whole fucking thing. Lee, having contact with Steve Simone and Dean Delray and Red Band, you know, uh, it's kept me together. But anger in your heart is just something that you have to figure out. And that's what these protesters have to figure out. And and listen, I'm angry too about what happened. I don't know what they're waiting on the rest of three fucking guys. But you know, you, they're accessory to felonies. Let's arrest these three guys. Let's show them all with orange suits on, and let's all fucking calm the fuck down. And that's all we could do. Let's have a good fucking time. You know what I'm saying? Take that fucking number out. It's Wednesday morning. It's the third. You don't have the rent. Big deal. <laughs> Neither does anybody else. You know what I'm saying? There's no debtor's prison. I dare them to come to try to throw you out. Especially now. They ain't got time to evict you. So tell your landlord to suck your dick. You'll be out next month. I mean, how? and you said it took time and all that, but... I, what's I was rotten. You? I was rotten. When you hear these fucking stories of me saying these stories, we laugh at it now. But it, I was a rotten fucking person for a while. And it wasn't me. It wasn't who I really was, guys. It really wasn't. All those stories, I tell you, I did them. I, I, I copped them. <laughs> but looking back now as a 57-year-old man, it wasn't me. It was the state of my heart. I had anger. I had anguish. You know, society took my mother. She didn't leave a will, no social security. So I wanted a full flood. I wanted a lash back at society with everything I had. And you know what? Looking at it now wasn't the answer. It ruined my life for years. The addiction fucked me up for 27 years. And for 10 years, I walked around with that anger in my fucking heart. That, you know, if I could kick a dog, shit like that. Like, I was just an angry fucking person. And... 
once that left my heart, you know, yesterday was June, uh, Monday was June 1st. I'm a month away from my 20 year anniversary with my wife. I met her July 1st of uh, 2000, the year 2000. And when that came to my mind yesterday, I went somewhere else for like 20 minutes because I was like, what the fuck has gone on in the last 20 years? And she was one of the people who helped get the anger out of my heart by just being her, you know, by just being her. So when you watch those images, uh, just think about it that way, you know, pray for them, pray that their hearts turn like mine did, you know, and uh, if, if my heart could turn with the anger I had, their hearts could turn, all right, so give everybody a break, we're going through tough times, like I said, you don't have to rent, if there's anybody else, don't worry about it, fuck it, that doesn't make you any less of anything, of anything, we're all in bad positions here, and we all have to adjust it. Speaking of which, you know what? That's why the best time to have friends is now. Limit your circle of friends. You you found out it was your friend the last fucking two months. You found out. Go to them. They're your new therapist. That's what I use my friends for. Today on the podcast, I interviewed Ari Shafir. Let me tell you how much I thank this man every day. When I mention him, you guys will think he did this, he said this, he did Bro, his actions have always spoken louder than words. We're family. I could look at Ari Shafi and tell you he is my brother. And if if something happened to Ari, I got to stand next to him and protect him. You know, when Ari had that, listen, all those specials I did and whatever, they sucked ass. But I'll tell you what, and I'll tell you, you, you guys know I tell you the truth. I bomb, I suck dick. When I watch myself on those Ari storytellers, that's who made me who I am today. That's what I am. When I go back to comedy, I'm going back to that style of comedy to finish my career. Because that's who I really am. Those stories were all great. They were all great. I watched one that two black dudes watched. When I told my mother, and I was fucking like, it showed me that somebody else understood. That is as dark as it. Lee told me that for a couple weeks I had dark humor. I got because of where I was 20 years ago. A couple of weeks ago, I posted a, a, a video of a black dude <laughs> putting a firecracker in his eye. Listen to me, 30 years ago, I would have tortured that guy for a month to put that firecracker in his eye. I would have told, I would have talked him into it for the small 20 to put the firecracker <laughs> in his eye. Not because he was black or he had a one eye. No, just because that's the evil I had in my heart. Some people saw that the good side some people felt the evil and they avoided me. But anyway, with all that shit, you got your friends. And uh, I, listen, there's 20,000 comics funnier than me. They're structured, whatever. But the good thing about comedy, and this is what I told Lee, is the friendships you make in comedy. I've made some tremendous friendships. And my friends have, have helped make my career. So for all you motherfuckers that think that Rogan was the one that put us on the map. Rogan opened the window. We all climbed in like looters. And Ari started a project. It was called whatever. This is not happening. And, you know, he fought Comedy Central to get me on there. So in my heart, I felt I had to do everything I could for my friend not to embarrass him. When somebody opens up the door for you, you fucking do the work double because you don't want to embarrass him. You're going to be the best you can, even if you don't want to, because somebody fucking fucking spoke up for you, so you got to doubly do the fucking work. I don't give a fuck what you feel. This guy fought for me, so I had to go up there and fucking level him. And if you watch each of those things, and you guys know I hate watching myself, I fucking went off on those things, and I didn't give a fuck, because it was my brother Ari. So he's on the podcast today. I hope you enjoy the fucking uh, interview. And that's it. I'll be here smoking reef. I'll talk to you in a couple of minutes. How you doing, buddy? How are you, my friend? Who's that behind you? Sarah Silverman? No. Why would I have Sarah Silverman? <laughs> that's, a, that's a young motherfucking Ozzy Osbourne. That's a young... Oh. Young, young Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, I don't know if it's going on with it. It's definitely going on wherever you're at. But there hasn't been a barber open or anything. Yeah. There's no barbers. There's no nothing. 
So I finally had it. I had it like two weeks ago. I had it. I tried it Puerto Rican style. I got out of the shower and I got my hair wet and I got a comb and I would just cut little, little inches from each, you know, whatever. And it looked okay. It looked a little dwarf. I noticed how much hair I had lost from the top already from this fucking pandemic. I must be losing hair from just yeah. with the stress or whatever. So the other day I go, man, I got to shoot these videos for these guys. And they always tell me, Joey, can you uh, darken your hair a little bit? You're supposed to be Uncle Joey, not Grandpa Joey. So it's like a class <laughs> that these guys got. Then they send it out. That's funny. So I went to Walgreens to buy some nicotine gum. And I didn't have my glasses, all right? So you know me, dog. I, I'm a, Listen, what people don't understand about me is that I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot savant. Like, I'm good at some things, but some things I just fuck up and I just laugh at. Most people can't yeah, laugh at their own mistakes. So I walk into fucking whatever, Walgreens. I get the nicotine thing, and I go, let me get them. I'm going to cut my hair, and I'm going to get some hair dye. So I can't see. So I just buy, like, whatever, hair dye. I forget to bring my glasses. I come home. I set the whole dead hair dye thing up. It's a piece of cake. You put gloves on. You, put it, on your, you put it on your hair, and you comb your fucking hair in the shower, and you stand there for 20 minutes. What I do is I usually shave. I kill time, you know. I get the loofah. I fucking scrub my ass. Wash all your right. monkey. Yeah. You know, I, I just take my time. I have a little chair in the shower. If that's the way it came. It's a small shower, but it has a little corner where you can just sit there. <laughs> There's times in just, the water? In, in the back of the right fucking outside shower. The, oh, that's it's like great. being in a hotel. Not much ass space. Someday I'm going to take the whole wall down. <laughs> I know it's already <laughs> going in, but I'm prepared to go down and whatever. <laughs> But anyway, it don't make a difference. I put the fucking thing in. I come out of the shower, and I come out, I go to dinner, and nobody says nothing to me about my new head, dude. Yeah. In fact, my wife says to me, Jesus Christ, you 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 can't wait to go to a doctor, uh, a, a barber. Your hair, your hair is fucked up. It's so fucking white. I go, I don't give a fuck about the color of my hair. You know, I just dyed it. I can't believe it's white. I don't know what happened. So... <laughs> I had to shoot the video, so I go, what the fuck am I going to do? I went back to Walgreens. But, listen, let me tell you what happened. When I got out of the shower that day, and I dried my hair, and I'm dressing, all of a sudden I went to throw the box away, and there's a little black bottle in there. And I go, I wonder what this black bottle is for. I go, maybe it's to touch up like your mustache or your eyebrows. I go, I ain't got time for that shit. So I put the thing away. So then I realized, I go, wait a second. Am I this fucking stupid? Is that, am I just getting this fucking stupid? So I go back to Walgreens two, two, three days ago. I get the same box of shit, and I figured out that that's the ink. You got to put it in there, you dumb fuck, and shake it What'd up. What'd you do? I just put nothing? the shampoo on my hair like nothing, <laughs> and then I was like, what the fuck is going on? My, my hair's getting fucking whiter. So I finally put the fucking thing in, I mixed it up, I took a sit, you know, old school, because I used to cut my own hair. The first three or four weeks of prison, you got to cut your own hair. What? That's yeah, funny. Just, what do you think? There's like, uh, what do you think, Lee? Do you think, think you should go to anybody? You think you go to think Fred the like Barber? Gino's hairstylist. I thought they had a barber job. In cell three. No, there's a guy that cuts hair. Why not? There's get, tons of black people. Yeah, you would think one of them would open up a show. Oh, yeah. No, we had to listen to me. It, in, in diagnostic, there's no barber. You, you ask them for a barber, and they'll probably smack you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> it's when you get to your destination. So you ready for this? The barber at my prison was a guy, an old school Chicano man. He was in there for cutting somebody, like killing somebody, but he was also a barber. But he would only cut hair with a straight razor. That's a weird style of people don't do that anymore. Especially in prison. That's the best. <laughs> yeah. That's the best haircut you could get is when somebody says they're going to cut your hair with a razor, you're going to look yeah. like fucking Elvis. I love it, dude. I love it. Yeah. Barbershops in New York where they go, like, yeah, they the, cut, even the beards. like with the razor. Yeah, razor. And it's like, it's so smooth after that. It's frightening, though. You've seen too many mob movies. That's how they take people out. 
Yeah, but no. This guy <laughs> with, the, with, with the cut your hair with a razor. Eight minutes. Eight minute haircut. Pop, pop, pop. He'd use his trimmers for two or three things. And after that, you were fucking out of there. Wow. But I just figured out how to cut my own hair. I just did a little Puerto Rican trim, a little hoop doop de doop, <laughs> a little head dye so you look <laughs> a little fucking natural. You Boop, know. Hoop de doop. This far, it's opening, Ari. It's opening. We're opening here. That's it. Retail opens today. I Retail get, does. I go get a new phone. So what's everybody worried today. about? Calling Ga- Gavin Newsom a fucking tyrant. It's opening. L.A. County is not. Uh uh-uh. uh. And forget. Well, that's not Gavin Newsom. And, and forget or maybe it is. Get about West Hollywood. See, West Hollywood is still batting that one virus. They're battling. They haven't cured that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, please. <laughs> They're like, and, hey, let's, know, get this, let's get AIDS under control for a second. And, and then the, you can trust us with COVID. The West Hollywood had AIDS? COVID. She had COVID. Somebody had COVID down there. But I'm hearing that all those rock clubs, they're trying to figure out what to do at all those places. That includes the comedy store. They're going to have a hard time opening up in West Hollywood. You know Rock and Roll Rouse? Yeah. Had 24 confirmed cases of employees there. And I no. know and I know a girl who got it from Rock and Roll Rouse. Really? Yep. So what are the fuck they Rock doing? Rock and Roll it's just Rouse like they... was the filthiest of all the fucking Rouse. Yeah, I mean that's how it is. People try to get laid there in the fucking frozen fish aisle. I'll join you, I guess. Okay, so Rock and Roll Rouse has always been one of the best supermarkets in the country. But people don't know Rock and Roll Rouse. It is, it's dude. When the, you get there, it, oh, you get to LA, and you're like, "What is this place?" <coughs> it's, it's so in the cool. Hollywood, people with leather people. pants on in the daytime. It's in the middle of Hollywood. It's across the street from the Sunset Hotel. Just in case you pick up a chick right there, and, and it's been done. Let me tell you something. I used to go to the fucking. I used to get liquor from Rouse at a quarter to two in the old days because I lived people were, down the corner from Rouse. Uh, uh, down the old place. Tons of women I used to pick up at Rouse. <laughs> or meet women that took you to that place. You want to come over? Oh my God. We just saw you at the comedy. I remember like being, like having like that. You don't even need that at Rouse. Not a rock and roll Rouse. You don't even need that. You're just like, you're cute. 1 a.m. spot. And they would go there to get beers because they were staying at that shitty hotel across the street. The drive-in one. Yes. Bro, I used to go to that hotel years ago. I ended up in that hotel many a fucking night fucked up with Bob Did you really? You went in there? That hotel used to be where you went from the comedy store. Me, Bob Baker, Jimmy Schubert, Marin. That's just drugs and hookers. That was a long time ago when we were still doing coke. 98, 97, 98, 99. That hotel on Sunset was where you ended up three nights a week or in your building. Because Corey Cuomo and and, and the girl lived in your Did building. Did you see? Did and you that, see? Huh? Did you see? See what? I got, I got to show you this. What your building looks like? Yeah, I saw it. I Did saw you? It. Yeah, I drove by it. But do you remember the black girl with the freckles that had AIDS in your building? And we used to always go to her house after Black it. girl? Yeah, because there was Holtzman that lived in that building. You, Corey Cuomo, Gentry, Abu Gentry. Ryan. Huh? Uh, 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 Paula Bell, Holtzman. Paula Bell, Holtzman. That's what your building looks like now? Yeah. It's gone. They finally did it. Yeah. They finally tore it down. It's gone. You see pinked out right there and nothing in between. And when did they throw you out? Seven years ago. Seven. Yeah. yeah. Seven years ago. And, it and then they ended up not selling it. seven years to fucking knock it down. They kept getting sued by the city. They're like, you're going to make it an eyesore by the rich people at the top. They're like, you're going to make it an eyesore. They're like, fine, we'll plant a garden on top. So you're just looking at greenery. And they're like, nah, traffic will be bad. They're like, what? why will traffic be bad? Yeah, when they you two hangouts they from, every ni- they could. from 97, you left the comedy store and you either went to your building when Holtzman lived in that building. There was Holtzman, but there was also a black girl, light-skinned black girl that had freckles 
and she was she was a hooker. Not a good looking thing. She had diseases. She had like sores on her body. I'm not fucking kidding you. You could tell she had been involved in some nasty shit. Or you went the guy you hit and run without the car. What's that fucking Florida? What's that comedy club in Florida? Not Cape. It's like an island that people go down there. Off the, off the hook. Off the hook. Off the hook okay. comedy club. Yeah. Off the hook comedy club was owned by a different guy. Okay. It closed, you know. And it was off the hook closed. I think so. I think it closed. Cap- Captain Brian's. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe Captain Brian's closed. Well, before whatever. Whatever was before yeah. Captain Hooks there in 1998 closed. He sold it for a big amount of money. This guy went in there in the early, mid-80s, opened up a comedy club, became friends with fucking everybody, and one day somebody came in and built a development and gave this guy a check. This guy took that check went to his bank in Florida, got it cashed to all 20s, put it in two suitcases, and flew out to L.A. and checked into that hotel. Now, he was like a well-renowned comedy club guy at that time that when you went to his club from Tuesday to Sunday, it was well-known you weren't sleeping. I had never worked for his club. I had never met the guy till he had moved out here. And once he okay. moved out here, I have to ask Schubert what the guy's name was. It was he bought an ounce of Coke a night for a month. Really? And he just went party, for it. He the, just went for it. The party started at the comedy store. And from there, it just ended somewhere till six in the morning. When did Coke die at the comedy store? Whenever Joey Diaz left. <laughs> <laughs> not really. No, not really. Because you got to remember, I wasn't doing Coke with people up there. No. I really I wasn't. You. Me and I didn't have a Coke partner up there. I had really one hidden Coke partner up there. And that was it. I didn't want my secret to get out. So I had one guy who, by mistake, I saw at the dealers one day. And he goes, I didn't know you knew him. But at that time, the guy was high up at the comedy store. So we never said nothing to nobody. But from time to time, I'd see him and he'd give me a little bump. So back there. But it's crazy how... When, no, when I was at the store, you know, Chewy sold it. There was nice, you'd go there, Rick James would be there waiting for Chewy. Really? Fucking, yeah, he knew a lot what of What a people. great location on the Sunset Strip. On the Sunset to have Strip. A, a, a storefront. And you could hide your Coke behind the bar. You don't have to have it in your pocket. Uh-huh. Somebody comes, they could give it to the bartender. You could put the Coke on the tape. I mean, what a, it was the ultimate Coke dealer job Chewy had. I used Open. to not know. It didn't make any sense. People would show up like, is Chewy here? I'm like, no. And they'd be like, uh, and they'd leave. I'd be like, what? You can still stay. Like comics. I'm like, well, you can still stay. It's okay. But I didn't know like what they were there for. <laughs> it was so weird because I got to the store and he was rough on people. He was rough on a lot of people because he knew the, the nature of the comic. You got to get into a, you know, comics will fuck with you. And him and Harris Pete would not take shit from no comic, not even a third. Like, you could not even tell them anything. They would fucking, who did, they did something. Like, Chewy crashed somebody's car on purpose. On purpose? Yeah, he smacked the one comic, and the guy left and packed up and went to Florida and became a realtor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. There was no fucking around the comedy. The two door guys. Dude, he wouldn't let me park there unless I brought him a cheeseburger from McDonald's. It could be 1.15 in the morning. There'd be six cars in the lot, and a lot that that, that has 60 people worth. There'd be a few cars there. I'd be like, hey, can I come in? And he'd be like, what do you got for me? I I had to fucking go get a cheeseburger to McDonald's. Like, here's your shakedown. So I was an employee there. Those two fucking dog guys were fucking tyrants. The first time I met Harris, I was working the phones, and I came down. And I saw him at who was the Indian guy? Charlie Hill. 
God rest nope. his soul. Not the younger him. one. He opened for Mencia a little bit later on. Um, long hair. He was like one of the upper regulars. Anyway, um, I said, hi, nice to meet you. And he goes, uh, oh, nice to meet you. And then Harris was there. I was like, oh, I'm Ari. I work upstairs. Uh, and he just, I put my hand out. He just goes, so? <laughs> and he walks away. <laughs> and I'm just like. He would. He was bitter. I love Harris <laughs> Pete. Me too. I love It's fun him. to go bitter with him. He was bitter. And he would tell you. I think I was telling uh, you guys yesterday. Yeah. That he knew what he wanted. You would say something to him, and he'd go, "It doesn't matter, because in three years I'm going to be in Montana anyway." Like he had a plan already. He had the yeah. date down. He knew when he was getting out of this shithole on New Year's. He would host upstairs. He would put a tuxedo Light up fireworks on. at midnight. Did you ever see him dressed up? It was funny. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that. It was fucking crazy <laughs> to get him to see him. Dra- I mean, the the comedy store staff was different. The, we I've would heard, go to- like, right now, I don't do coke. I haven't yeah. done coke in 12 fucking years. I didn't even know cocaine existed at the comedy store. I found Why? out about a year ago that after 11.30, that's when the freaks come out of the comedy store. <laughs> I'm gone by, you know what I'm saying? I'm gone by 11, 11.15. But I hear if you go oh, yeah. to the comedy store about 12.30, that place is real. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's when we, we stayed till the end yeah, all the time. Yeah, no, you stayed. I was telling Lee when you, when you and I discussed you moving to New York. I remember saying to you, it's a no-brainer for a guy like you. It doesn't make sense because I could be up and I would go home, snort coke. I would come down at 5 and call you Yeah, at 5, <laughs> and you'd just be walking in. <laughs> yeah. He called one time. He just like, I, the phone rang. It was like, I don't know, about 5 o'clock. Sometimes I play video games till the sun came up. You should hear the garbage trucks first. You're like, fuck. I stayed up too long. Then you stay up for another hour. Anyway, he called. And it wasn't like I was in bed. I was just like, hello? And he just starts <laughs> laughing. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you laughing? I goes, you're the only one I knew would be awake right now. I knew As he he's be waking awake. up. If you're not going to sleep, New York is the place for you. If uh, yeah. you're really going to... I'm the type of motherfucker that if it's midnight now in L.A., the last 10 years... Going home. Four out of 10, I'll get in the car and go for a ride. Because there is nowhere to go. You're just going for a ride. Yeah. Starbucks is open till midnight. That's it. But in New York, I can get up at 1 in the morning, still do two spots. Yeah, exactly. You could do two spots after 1 in the morning, and then we'll get a, go get a steak. And, and then you can get a, steak get a steak with steak some scotch. With fucking eggs and fucking, and then you talk. There's no so, supermarket going, oh, tw- uh, tw- uh, no. 159, you can't sell anymore. That's why when you said New York, I was like, it's the real, it's a no-brainer oh, for a so guy much like fun. you. Because you take advantage of what's there. You're going to be out till 5 every morning. If you're not going to be out till 5, don't move to New York. Be a pussy. Even if it's just smoking a cigar, even if it's just smoking a joint and walking around the streets. I'll call yeah. my West Coast friends then because they're you know a little early, and it's just like, just walk around and enjoy it, especially like April to October. It's so weird. Like I've, been giving, I've been giving interviews to this guy. He's trying to put a book together. Who? Fuck him. I'm a better writer than him. No, 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 no. He, he, this guy's a great writer. He's a, he's a great author. I don't even author. know. It's fine. He's a great author. And he's, he's writing a book about, you know, like, he has all these great pictures of architecture from the 80s in New York and what the 80s were like in New York. And he goes, a friend referred me for you, to you because he's a podcast fan. And he said, you know, a lot of stuff. He goes, if I sent you, like, just little things, would you? And I go, absolutely. You know, are you going to give me a credit in your book? He goes, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You know, so we just talked about, like, CBGBs, Ooh. how I snuck in there when I was 14 to see <gasps> the police. Really? No, I didn't even sneak in. The guy let me in the front door. I that a, place, a that part of ID. town was so degenerate. All the stories of like uh, Kevin Pollack and fucking, uh, 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 as, what's her name, Smith, and all the fucking, every, every artist, every musician was poor living down there because there was heroin there. 
and they put on their uniforms and go work at TGI Fridays uptown. It's to make crazy ends how different the city was. CBGB the, is a fucking high end clothing store now. The village was a, a complete different entity in New York. In the seventies, you didn't go to the village. You went to Chinatown. If you went to the village, it was because you were a little weird. You were con yeah. You were considered to be a little yeah. out there. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the village where is like where people who were gluten free yeah, would go to the gl village in the in the eighties, you know, and heroin people. Oh. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, and that's, the, that's where they came together. City. That's where those Fuck, people met up. That's where they met up. It was gluten free people, people who thought they were special in the village, you know. Yeah. And then you had fucking heroin in that village. So and there was that, coolness mixed with some cash. Yeah, it was it was really weird. I don't know what our point was, what the fuck we're talking about. That's why if you look at the Marvelous Miss Maisel, that was always like the back then, the the village, you know, where it was like, ooh, cool. Uh-oh, someone's getting shot. Right. Like, ooh, you know, yeah. they're like slumming yeah. it in a, in a hip way. The, the the village was white. The only time oh, I used I'm to up go all to the night. village That's you got into it. for this place called Bleaker Bob's, it was my probably my all-time favorite it was it was amoeba but cheap you know what i'm saying it okay. was amoeba record store yes but when i was but a like, kid it was like fucking a paradise you know like you went to amoeba you went to whatever the fuck i what i want bleak of bobs, bleak of bobs <laughs> to lose your mind <laughs> you would find shit there that you didn't know existed yeah. Live shows, shit like that, you know. The village wasn't really uh I remember That's going so to the cool village. though to go to CBGB's. Let me tell you how old I was. Let me tell you how old I am. I was in the village when she, the Sunday after John Lennon got shot. And I still remember New York how fucking packed it was. What do you mean? Like you it respect? was bumper to bumper, fucking people walking from all boroughs from states, people, everybody came in to go to Central Park for the wow. John Lennon Memorial. So instead of me going that way heavy, I said, let me go the other way. They had a little park down in the village that they were going to have a memorial on. And I remember I went to the village. I went to Bleak of Bob's. I went into that park and I bought some Coke. They sold Coke at that park when I was a kid. It wasn't the best Coke in the world, but it did the trick. And I also yeah. had a head shop down in down in the village. And I bought in those days it was like a Coke wallet. Like you opened this wallet up and it had a bottle, a razor blade, and a tutor, and a little like a, a shiny not piece of glass because it couldn't break. It was like a piece of stone. Yeah. So you had your own little Coke kit <laughs> in your wallet. Only in nineteen eighty, you know. This Dude, had the Bowie a, exhibit this, this had, was 1980, had a whole, exactly, yeah. The Bowie exhibit had a whole glass table full of Coke spoons. What's that? The David Bowie, it was like a David Bowie traveling museum. I saw it in like Melbourne and, and then somewhere else too, Brooklyn. Oh my God. It, it just was... got a whole tray of his Coke spoons. And they're all beautiful. <laughs> he just had like 30 of them. That is crazy that he had his own Coke spoons. Yeah, his own Coke spoon display. How many times? I almost got you a Coke spoon from Columbia. I was there. I almost picked you up one, and my other buddy who still does it, I don't want to say. No, let me ask you this. They sell Coke spoons in Columbia still? It mostly tourist shit because they're like, you're probably here for Coke. And it's like, but are like they, only in the tourist part of town. Are they it's a like, little bottle? Know, little or are they, is, is there a little spoon on top of a little bottle with a chain or just? It was just, I don't know, just like a little spoon, probably like the size of like, yeah, maybe like your finger, you know, with just like, it looks like a salt spoon. We just take a couple pieces of salt, and put those like that big. You know, for a little tootsie roots. Tootsie roots. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I used to have the unique Coke tool that yeah, I don't what? know who, who made it, who invented it. It was a, a double barrel shotgun and it was a straw. But instead of right here, it, it became two straws and it went into your nose. Wow. Remember, remember when we were kids and they had that crazy fucking straw? Uh -huh. Crazy straws. The crazy straw. <laughs> yeah. And you drank chocolate milk, then you had a stroke. After that, yeah. if, if you see a kid with a fucked up eye today, it's because he had a crazy straw. And so he, let me use it on my white castle shake. Oh, you're going to be sucking till your eye pops out, kid. 
If you see somebody today with a fucked up jaw or with like a <laughs> fucked up eye, it's because they drank a shake of like a, a to six slowly shake. get it up. Yeah, you got to <laughs> suck hard, and you're like trying to prove it to your parents. And your parents are like, I'm telling you, it's not going to work. And you're like, it's going to work. And you're pulling, and you're pulling, and you know you're dying. That's the fucking worst. Anyway, they had this fucking Coke straw that was a, a piece of glass with two tubes. And at the end of the straw, it was a shovel. All made from glass. So you put it in like your pocket in your jacket. You opened up the baggie. You put the straw in. Then you put two things to your nose. And they went. And you get both of them. It's called double barrel shotgun. But, but when you got fucked up, you put it on your back pocket and you sat on it. And there went the neighborhood. I must have sat on 20 of those things. Never got a stitch. You know what I'm saying? What did the cops call you with one of these things? You throw them away. The cops never catch you. Okay. The cops never caught you in those days. I never got caught with nothing. I got caught with weed. That is it. Really? That was it. I never got caught with anything. Caught wow. with weed. I got it out of the way early. I got arrested in January of 82 for weed in New York City, and I got a ticket. And they made me go to court, and they gave me six months of that probation that if you don't get in trouble, it doesn't stay on your record. Mm -hmm. And that was it. I've read. You've read. <laughs> I mean, I'm guessing, yeah, sounds right. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that was an easy, I, I called the guy three times, I swear to God. I called the guy. I had to call him once a month. Just to check in, say I'm not doing crimes? How you doing? How you doing, Joey? Good. What are you doing? Up to, oh, I got a job at Foot Locker. I'm living with my mother. I'm behaving myself. All right, call me next month. Have you had any uh, uh, police contact? No, I haven't. All right, thank you. That was it. Huh. And, and then I moved to Colorado, and I called him and told him I was moving. And he goes, just write me a letter and make it official, and you're out. Don't worry about nothing. He was a good probation wow. officer. That's cool. You got good ones and you got bad ones. There's a probation officer walking around that I guarantee that motherfucker still thinks of me and wishes Why? I'd get hit you by a him? car. Oh, I tortured that guy on principle. I kept. I would put chemicals in my urine test to break the machine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it couldn't read anything for anybody for the rest of the day. <laughs> It'd just be like a little percent of your, a little bit of coke. Then what's this? No, oh, because he was, you know you send oh. them out. You send them out to labs. Then when the labs yeah. test them, they're like, "What the fuck did this guy do?" <laughs> because you could throw shit in your piss to Clorox. throw them off. But they count as a hot urinalysis, so you got to be crazy, too. You got to be a little careful. All right, so the country's lives. opening up. What do you think, brother? What I is your? Know. I'm what not is a fucking your, expert. Everyone asks your, his comics what the fuck, what they should do. I, you know, I'm not you know an expert. You crazy? First of all, I don't live, I live by the quarter, but most importantly, I live by the day. Yeah. Right now, I want you to tell me your quarter project. Okay. I'm talking about what do you see going on till September? September and before. I'll be Let's in not New York. Even talk about anything. I'll probably be in New York. Probably no stand up. There'll probably be no stand up open, which I don't, I don't understand. How is there not going to be stand up open in New York in fucking June? Well, they're two. We every step is two weeks. So I read today. First step is like you know necessities. Then is like real estate type things. Then is restaurants, and then is like sporting events and live. And each one is two weeks in between. So I don't know. They're, the thing mid June is when they start step one. Early to mid June, so it's like August till really till it gets like open, open. Maybe I'll go somewhere. I don't fucking know. But if I'm there, it's just gonna be walking <clears> around, <throat> getting fucking tuned up with friends. We're just gonna be doing hella Molly, a little bit of coke and then some like a uh, bunch of booze and weed and stuff and having a fucking great time my I, friend said it the best sal said it the best it's gonna be the fucking roaring 20s we're not gonna have anywhere to go the next day for about two months <laughs> it's gonna be insane everyone's gonna be like just come over to my place we're having a house party we're having eight people together and then there's not you know that moment in a part where someone's like all right i gotta go home i gotta and people are like why 
Just go sleep in the bed. We'll start fucking partying again tomorrow fucking noon. Who cares? Nothing, no one's got anywhere to be. Right now. Yeah. So as soon as they say you can go over to your friend's house, which is like in a week or two, we're all going to friends' houses. We're not just going to do that sober. <laughs> this town is going to get fucked up hard for like two months. It's going to be on, Joey. You're going to wake up. Somebody's going to just put a joint in your mouth. And you're like, all right. And then like, here's your, come get your line. And you're like, you know, fucking quarantine you, coffee. I, they're saying they're not opening up Broadway till January 1st. Sorry. Who cares? Who wants, who wants to watch a fucking a man in tights singing a song? Fuck oh, that. Listen, do you see Movie me going theaters. to fucking see Rigoletto and plays and shit? But that concerns Why? The me. Spider Man, the musical, the fucking movies aren't good anymore. The musical's so, gonna be good. What are we gonna do with the Knicks? They're banned. They're, we're sending them to Toronto. They haven't been good in twenty five <laughs> years. If, if fucking, if there's no, if there's no, if there's no whatever basketball, no NBA, no Garden, no Garden, no Garden. Penn Station is gonna be sort of open underneath it. I mean, it's a great time to stab somebody, Joey. Get your fucking get your get your dead stabbing no, weapon out. I mean, fucking, we're, come on we're, down to New York. Know, we're all talking. People that listen to this show. Yeah, you know yourself, Steve Simone, all our friends, except for Rogan, who hit the jackpot in the middle yeah. of the depression. You know what I'm saying? He's doing better than ever. Yeah, like, yeah. He, made, <laughs> he hit the jackpot in the middle of the depression, and I'm very proud, <laughs> and uh, I want to congratulate him. I mean, you know, everybody yeah. else is. Up in the air. I was like, how am yeah. I going to make ends meet? And he's like, I ain't even thinking that way. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going, even thinking oh, that motherfuckers. way. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I mean, what do you think about the road, your safety, if you stay close to your I ain't going to fly for a while. I'm not going to fly for a while. I'm in no rush to test this shit out. People are like, oh, everybody says it's not that bad. People say it's worse. I'm not looking to test shit out. What about so I'm going to drive everywhere, including trains. if I go move somewhere for a while. I'm going to drive there. Make Take a few days. Doesn't matter. Not in any rush. We're in a time of like you can relax. I've got a YouTube channel started. Just doing shit, you know? Just getting shit going and having fun, spending time with my parents, or just going on a road. Just going on like a two week long road trip. Why not? You got nothing else going on. So I'm going to do shit like that. But if I can't do stand up, I don't know. I'm going to go a little nutty. I'm just thinking of moving to Hong Kong, but now it's fucking not that great there. It's, it hasn't been that good there for a long time, Ari. It's Fuck been great. Luck. You were never allowed out of America. You're not going to go to fucking Hong Kong. Just stay <laughs> the stand-up right club was open. They had opened the stand-up club for a month already. They did what? The stand-up club there has been open for a month. That's great. Let them Four deaths total. Sit there. Yeah, that's great. In a month. They well, handled people it. People fucking died in a month going to a fucking comedy club. That's a comedy club I want to work at. You know what I'm saying? Where people die one Thank you. Week. I can't read sarcasm. I think you're right. No, 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 no. <laughs> Listen, you don't, you don't ever want somebody to fucking say I went to Ari Shafir's show and somebody breathed on me and I got fucking sighs and my eye won't work. It's Hong Kong. It was way safer than New York, safer than L.A. What's that? Hong Kong was safer than L.A. and New York and Chicago, Seattle, Who's anywhere. Safer? Hong Kong was Hong Kong was safer. Who say? Are you fucking crazy? <laughs> Four That's deaths. where the fucking whole thing started. Listen, Larry. That's not Why get me fucking started It's for? way far away. Listen, That's like saying something started in fucking uh, Winnipeg, and you're like, no, don't go to Mexico City. The dog. It's, <laughs> it started in Hong Kong. Where did it start? Wuhan, China. Wuhan. Where's Hong Kong? Wait, wait. Show him a map. Open up a map, Lee. Uh, let's see here. Where the fuck is China, and where the fuck is Wuhan? That's what I want to know. Hong Kong. Who hands up like China's asshole right in the middle, right in the fucking bong hole. Okay. I don't know who it is, to be honest. I have Hong no Kong? idea. Hong Kong is the southern right tip, the bottom right tip on the map. So it's like going from San Diego to LA. It's like a three hour flight from yeah, Beijing good. Listen, to, to mind Hong your Kong. your fucking business. <laughs> no, All I'm right, saying we don't even know where Wuhan, Wuhan is, though. Are. We don't you know ain't where Wuhan is. Hong Kong. It could be further. It could be further. You, believe me alone. Why you got to upset me? <laughs> it's the morning time. I'm not going anywhere. There's too many upset. protests. I love you more than anything in the world. I want you two hours from D Day. <laughs> where they, there's not even people walking around with no eyebrows in Wuhan. And you want to go do comedy for those fucking people. They're they putting, have shows. They got putting, spots. They're putting fucking st- uh, 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 posters. Uh, uh, where are you going to guarantee me I can do spots? Where? I don't know where besides well, there. Well, it depends if you're in Baltimore or, or, or 
you're yeah. in fucking not, New York. There's no spots open in Baltimore, and it's oh. not going to open up in November when it gets worse again. We don't. We don't know. We don't know, Dick. Let's just assume for the next ninety fucking days. What is your fucking plan? Eventually, things are going to open in three weeks. You got to okay. get back on stage. You, it's in you gotta your blood. Got to get back on stage. It's in your blood. Yeah. All right. So you you pick three clubs. So I might move somewhere where they have more stand up. Where the um, fuck do they just, have more stand up than in New York? They don't have it in New York. Why not? Because New York City is starting phase one in the fucking early to mid June. They haven't met all the fucking check marks yet. All right. Listen, they're gonna open up fucking restaurants. Okay. All right. It's be so. Great. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'll, I'll not do spots for a little while. Longer. Listen to it's me. Gonna Once suck, they open but I'll not up do spots restaurants, which is the stand, which yeah. is Gotham, which is all these things, there's a bunch of restaurants yeah. that that do comedy. I hear wink, you. Wink, wink. You understand okay. me? I do. Now that no, you wink, I get it. We're not a comedy club. Ah, people come in from time to time. <laughs> we're from time a to restaurant. Time. That does comedy. That's a local homeless person. He's just up there We're blathering. We're not a comedy club. That you understand me? <laughs> and so they give now, you one of those. The, just the, like what people don't know. Like I've been talking to a lot of business owners, and I, you know, they call me with friends, and you know, I have George in Jersey, and yeah. I go, "You're barking up the wrong tree." If you're a business owner right now, instead of crying every day and calling your governor and bothering them. When are you going to open up my business? I want you to realistically look at your business. Yeah. Sit down, get a fucking measuring thing, measure seven feet. Well, it's six. Comedy Joey. club. <laughs> measure seven. <laughs> measure seven. Buy a piece of plexiglass. Put it on top of your thing, and you have to have a written plan for that certain Department of Health, and they'll open you up. I bet that'd be great. Plexi glass. So everyone's out there at a restaurant, but you're all behind plexi glass. You can be right there, and they serve your the, no, your food no, 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 through no, one of those trays. No, no. Close so it. Airtight case opens up. Is, push through. What you're gonna have is you're gonna walk into a restaurant. A chick's gonna come up to you with a mask uh -huh. and gloves, and there's gonna be a table in between you and the people next to you, and they're gonna take your order. Not doing it. And then they're going to throw away their pay, the menu, and then they're going to bring you whatever, and then you eat, and you pay with cash, ATM, and on the right, way out, you have arrows on the floor, and it shows you how to social distance. That's it. I'm not, do, I'm not taking that chance. I'm not doing it. I'll let other You're people do it. You're not doing what chance? I'm not doing that. I'm not going to socially distant restaurants when it's half full and lame. Okay. No, not, that's well, not true. Not I will. Right, I know right, myself. Listen, As I said it, I realize listen, it's not true. For the, I'm for, for sure going to do that much. You've eaten monkey brains in Thailand. At this point, you eat <laughs> what the here. fuck they give you, okay? You've eaten, land and in you've eaten fucking like uh, some fucking bull in Thailand. Yeah. At this point, you could eat a billy goat. You're like John Rambo. So I think I ate some dog soup in I'm Indonesia. I'm not talking about fucking, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about what comedy clubs do you see opening in New York? Because okay. they're restaurants. Smaller ones, I think. Okay. Like so. The Stand, The Cellar. Okay. Um, uh, New York Comedy Club, the small ones. If you're a fucking hundred seater, you, you can already comply with like you know a Listen, little bit. 30. Let me By ask the way, you a question: When we regular started weekdays, back at the store, when we first became regulars, and you went up at twelve thirty, how many people yeah. were on stage? That's what Matt Edgar said. Yeah. How many people were on stage? One in stage on the audience. How many people in the, in the audience? Yeah. Eight, twelve. Look at me now. Six, two. Ooh, look at me now. Absolutely. 29 years later, <laughs> with nine people in the it's audience gonna be every night. Now. It's like, yeah, I've done that before. I did the store five nights, four nights a week to eight people following Paul Mooney. Uh -huh. It could be done once. It could be done again. Okay. You know who's not going to handle that? Who? The fucking podcast comics, the fucking actor comics, the ones who are like, oh, I never did that before. <laughs> Why would I go up in front of less in the theater? <laughs> it's like you ain't going to be able to handle that fucking spaced out room. Listen, as a comic, we all have you can. needs. We Jay all can, have needs. I can. And we all know what we want and we don't want to do. Dude, There's on a Tuesday night at, fucking, the road. at the 10 o'clock show, you're only getting 30 people anyway. It's not that weird. 
we had shows canceled in New York fucking six months ago because of nobody came. Well, the problem in New York that became in New York was you had two, all of a sudden you had 200 comedy clubs. Yeah. And and 50, 25 of them were really legit. The other ones are just fucking dumps. Yeah, it's always, they always got two good comics at every one you of those know? clubs. So this is what, oh, New York became what every place else became, greedy. You know, four, oh, oh, I got four Rich walls. Rich people killed NYC. Yeah, I got four walls. We can get a liquor license. We don't need a liquor license. Look what happened in L.A. All these shitholes started opening up open mics, which made oh, yeah. guys pay $5 to get on stage. Pay in to get on world, stage. Remember how shitty that was? Fuck that place. In my world, that's complete bullshit. But it's complete bullshit. In a reality, Every time they make you buy a drink, I'd be like, well, I'm stealing a yeah, glass. Yeah, you'd have to buy a drink. Westwood Brew Co. There was a time I have in so New many York, of your glasses. Fuck there, off. There was a time in New York where you had to bring five people. Yeah, they call bringer shows, whatever. Bringer shows. But for our situation, yeah. right now, 90 days, Yeah. when do you think you're going to go back to New York full time? About another month? I think maybe even less than that. And then I think a couple weeks. And then like hang out there for a little bit. Go back to my stuff for like a month or two. Feel it out. You know, ch- changes. And then maybe figure out another city to live in. Or if, if if comedy clubs still open open again, I would love to do it in New York. All I need is those 20, 30 people. 10. How really 10. Get now, a minion. Ari? Get a minion. How old are you now? 46 years old. How old is the, how, how, how are you and the girlfriend getting along? It's fucking great. You know, these okay, are the things too. So, uh, how's so, it going to be so, with you 24-7? So, Fine. So totally cool. Let me ask you a question. How many nights a week do you still want to go out and do comedy? Seven. Still? Still in your heart? <laughs> Maybe in the five or six. I mean, you got the girlfriend now. You're a little older. How many? You don't care. Okay. So Five, then, five at least then nights New York of is going out you. multiple spots every night. You wouldn't consider staying where you're at now and doing what you're doing in New York? Same thing? What do you mean? I mean, what oh, you do? Oh, just doing nothing. You mean just like hanging out? Yeah, maybe for a little bit. See your friends. That's it. dude. I haven't seen my friends in a while. What friends? Which well, fuck you? What I have friends, friends are you talking about? In, in New York? I don't know what friends. You're... In New, oh yeah, New the York. In Jer- I don't know you. Your no, friends, New York. Big J and, and DeRosa friends. and Corinne and like. Okay, I didn't know. You know, that. I haven't seen my friends, Norman and shit. It's like I haven't seen any. It's like annoying. I would do that for a while and just hang out with friends, one on ones. You know. I could I could be okay creatively if I with could no talk comedy to some comics or with comedy. Yeah, with no comedy, I could be okay oh, as long no, as I could no, shoot no. the shit with if, some comedians. You don't go to New for York for a little while. So there's comedy. You stay, but as I close want five to, nights a week. You stay as close to you can to your family till the comedy opens. Don't I, go nowhere. Yeah, I'm until going the nuts here, opens. huh? I'm going nuts here a little bit. You got to do some social stuff. You no, can't do mushrooms here. Just, They're just, Orthodox Jewish. Just go hang out with your dad. I do. It's been stories. fun. How much? How fun is it? You know what I would do right now to smoke a what? joint and go torture my dad. I fucking go fucking go. <laughs> Dude, I gotta hide. I gotta hide before dinner sometimes. Oh yeah. And, and they don't even know. They're like, "Oh, Ari's being so fun today." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't even understand why you don't dose him a little. Give him like a ten milligram and take him for a walk and let him tell you. I'm really a little <laughs> let weird. Kick in. Yeah, give I him mean, a little don't, bird, bird don't, get, don't give him a bird dinner. Just give him a little no. like a, <laughs> just give him like a little five milligram gummy bear, just, just to, to feel see, it, just for him to feel it, and then let him loosen up. He's like, yeah, that, 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 that felt kind of good. Now, boom. Then next thing you know, we'll send him a capsule. Like... We'll send him a capsule of death, one of those twenty-five <laughs> milligrams. Straight from there to starve death. <laughs> let me tell you something. Your father will walk. Is he still walking? Oh uh, yeah. Every day? Uh, yeah. Every yeah. Day. That, that's what keeps those guys alive. My grand's crazy. I went to see my uncle Saturday with my daughter. 82. Yeah. He looks fucking... He yeah. looks unbelievable. Five miles you see, some of these people... Day. Etta James, I just looked up, died at 81. I was like, oh, wow. And I'm like, wow. I mean, she must have lived way harder than my dad. Done a lot of drugs. A lot of drugs and just not taking care. You know, the road... Yeah, is a killer when you're a performer, especially. I just saw that Amy Winehouse older. documentary. You see it? Is it new or the old one? I think it's been the last couple of years. Yeah, I watched it when it first came out. No, it no, really the, was the so ro- fucking lame. She just got on the road, and it was just like it wasn't even like the Nirvana thing where it's like, oh, he was tortured. It was just like, 
she got into coke and crack and heroin and then she just kept doing it and then it was all over it wasn't even like a response to anything it was just like she just got on the road and did got worn out and did a bunch of crank and fucking died she was getting fucked up yeah yeah she would have been cool to party with she was getting you know who i want to party with in new york who's the chick who was on one of those uh, abc family shows or whatever she's blonde she might have been sabrina the teenage witch or it might have been somebody else. She's fucking batshit crazy now. She got caught throwing a fucking bong out of her fucking fifth story window in New York. The cops knocked on the door because she was partying too loud. She freaked out and took her bong and threw it under the street. Her glass bong. What's her name, Lee? Is that Melissa, Melissa Joe Hart? Is that what you mean? Nope, nope. It, she played Sabrina. It was the other. It was the other one right on the same time. But and she's oh, fucking batshit you crazy. Amanda Bynes. Amanda Bynes. I want to party with her just one night or two and just be like, let's have some fun. Let's talk shit. Let's get fucked up. She knows some fucking secret spots in New York for sure where you knock on a fucking uh, walk-in refrigerator and then there's some steps down to some cool club. She knows all those spots. I want to party with her and whatever she puts in front of me, I'm like, sure. Tonight's about me and Bynesy. So I'm a little lost. Man. Yeah. That's the New York I want to do. This is. I want to get back to that. Is, let's let's. Oh fuck! What's that in the window? It's the sunlight, and we're you, still drinking beers. You are on a different planet. What's going on with you? <laughs> are you all right? Are you I need some socialization. The, you you need what? Some socializing. We're doing what? Who do you want to talk? <sighs> to? Just pick up the phone. Call somebody. What do you want to do? I socialize? do, but it's like you want to be there with somebody. Where? I do. I call. Where the fuck I talk do you, you want to be? You're gonna what? go there's, if there's no common in New York. What are you gonna do? Walk around with Joe DeRosa and get slices of pizza? Yeah, go to the Museum exactly. of Natural History. There's nothing open, dude. You there's 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 um there's um uh front. You know that like where you go to get a pizza slice that's on the street, so you don't have to walk in the the you know the window service. They have that for bars now. You can go get a fucking mixed drink and be like, see you later, and walk on with it like it was a like it was a fucking smoothie from Starbucks. So what are you gonna do? <laughs> New York's There's cool again. Open. I want to get back go? there. It's the funnest time. It's like you know, in between in L.A. in between New Year's, Christmas, and New Year's, and it's always like at a third capacity. You can find parking. You're like, oh yeah, this makes sense. I like this city. Just that week, that's how New York's gonna be. Just fucking rerun this city. It's already great. It was already great. Dude, do you know what it's like to be white in New York? They let you drink openly in the street. The worst they're going to say is, fucking, come on, put that in the trash can. You can do whatever you want. It's amazing. It's going to be right back to that. They're going to enforce a law that fucking your grandmother died yesterday. Fuck, get out of here. I'm just drinking. I think the, they thin the herd in New York, dog. A lot oh, of yeah. people are going to come in back New York. for sure. It's, it's going to be cool. A lot again. of people left New York. They, they're done with buildings. Lee said he went for a walk the other day with Steve I Simone. I already don't believe you. No. Him and Steve Simone. Steve's yeah. a liar. One, He's a godless liar. He gets him out of the house twice a week. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's good. He only does twice a week. He says an excuse. <laughs> the mail, Steve going to the mail is a comment one day. I didn't hear from him. So. I only walked to Starbucks at Burbank. That's a good walk. Up the fucking uh, corner. <laughs> But uh, he said he saw four moving trucks on the walk. So between here and there, people are abandoning fucking ship, Jack. It's, it's going to be weird. Uh, people want to get out of buildings. So they'll thin to her. And it's funny. I've been watching a lot of old New York movies yeah. and looking at the streets, the extras, how they would do. New York just grew exponentially. That area... The population in that area, you know, I wonder what it was in 82 to what There's no more Soho. Now. You can't have that because rich people are like, I need to be, it, it keeps it's, pushing it's, out. It's, it's it's too much. So this will yeah. be good. Hopefully, it'll go back. It'll get back to it. It'll get back it'll to drop. it. Well, there'll be a new generation of momos. They'll have a vaccine. But like how many people can afford to send their kid to get an apartment where they're at NYU? It's like, you know what I mean? It's like, look, I can still afford to send you there, but we're 40 minute drive. I can't afford another 30 grand a year to put you up in an yeah, no, apartment. No, no, no. You got you to you know? make the drive. It's going to be rough for a few so months. Those, em- those are empty. It's going to bring everything down. It's going to bring fucking drugs up. It's going to be way cool again. A little violence too. A little violence will be back. It's worth it. It'll be cool again. So anyway, that's what I'll do for a few months. And then who the fuck knows? Who the fuck knows? 
I'm like you. I'm living the now. I'm enjoying myself. I'm having a great time. Started a podcast channel, like I said, youtube.com slash skeptic tank. Fucking pushing into there. Just teach yoga. I don't know. Have fun. I walk my dog. I spend time with my dog. I go now, to the what, woods now, fucking the every day. Five yoga? days a week I go here. What's the teaching yoga? How long have you been involved with yoga? Well, Joey, I've been enlightened, I would say, for a long time. I have friends that have been to India, uh, some multiple times. Okay. So when you talk about enlightenment, you really can't have that conversation without thinking about me. Uh, and yoga is not just a way to work out. It's also a way of life, Joey. It's about getting your mind and your body straight. So what I do is I get some fucking booze or a joint, and I fucking do yoga. I'm a yogi. I do legit classes, <laughs> but, you know, as best as I no, can do. No, I'm not you, good at it. Are you certified and everything? Yeah, I'm certified in every fucking accreditation there is. Who certified you? I have friends that have been to India, Joey. <laughs> are you not hearing me? Listen, Some multiple times. Listen, where I get my lottery tickets, he's from India, oh, too. Sorry, I can't. That doesn't mean I'm a lottery fucking. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a I'm a oh, fucking that's... yoga teacher. How many moves do you have? Oh, okay. well, watch this right do now. You have a pattern. Wait, look at that. That's touching, Joey. Oh, that's, no, that's flexibility. That's great. That's great. I mean, do you have a flow? There are 30 minute is classes. A, 30 minute classes. Flow? 10 minutes of that is just fucking sitting there being thankful. Do we open up with an namaste? Is there a bong? Do we hit a gong? Close up. Sometimes there's a bong. Look, if I was home, Not there'd a be a bong. bong occasionally. A gong, you fuck. You got to oh. hit a gong. Do you do the breath of fire? These are the questions I'm asking you. <laughs> Show me the I breath want of the fire. I to know. I have the ass of fire. What's the breath of fire? The breath of fire is with, with fucking Henzo Grace or whatever. You sit there, your palms out. Oh, yeah. Look there is now. I look I've like you suggestion. walking across the street. Look. <laughs> The the best teacher for Breath of it's Fire is on uh, Sunset and uh, uh, Laurel Canyon. Yeah, Laurel Canyon. Those are students of mine. Sunset and Laurel Canyon. They're not fucking students of yours. Yeah, they are. They're There's protégés. There's a lady there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the lady teaches, at Sunset in Los, in Los Angeles. I know what you're talking about. That's and a different yoga. That's called, that's, a, that's the yoga with the Kundalini. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah no, all that's pleasures. the breath one. Then there's the other one that my wife goes to. I used to go with a. All right, so that's Tybo. how you became a yoga teacher because you, <laughs> you have <laughs> you got to do one of my once, <laughs> and you got fucking enlightened. Ain't that a kick in the fucking ass? <laughs> it's I really crazy because my last, I probably get like twelve minutes of moves in about thirty minutes. Yoga people are the nicest people in the world. They got a little body funk to them. We are. But besides that, they're really nice, nice people. They try. They, they don't clean the mat, you know. But they don't clean the mat. There's a little, at the Y, there's a cute, cute little yoga teacher there. When I first moved up there, me and my wife used to go up there on Tuesday nights for date night. This is way before the birth of my daughter. This is 10 years ago. Every Tuesday, my wife would get home. We'd change and we'd run to the Y and we'd do 6 to 7.30 yoga. We'd eat dinner at NoHo, and then we'd run home and watch Sons of Anarchy. And that was our date night, and then we'd go again Saturdays at 11.30. This is even before the podcast. This is oh. 2010. That was our system. I wasn't really going on the road. Me, you, and Rogan, whenever Rogan would take us out, we weren't really going on the road in 2010. No, 2010. No, no. So. That's a good date night, though. Yeah, yoga for a date night is one of the best things. In the I world. had this whole studio. I was going to do it there. I was going to do it in there and invite friends over to do yoga. Just fucking comics trying their best, you know? And I've then everything. Always, the whole listen, I could do a downward dog. I'm There's sure you tons can. tons of stuff I could do. I do. We'll do one together when I I'm in I do Manila. yoga at the end of my workouts. I'll do. Stretch I, it out. I'll do a cat, cat pose. Cat pose. I've heard of that. Cat pose. I'll do a child pose. I don't know I'll, that one. I'll switch it up into uh, the one where you lift the arm and lift up the opposite leg. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. I do the one where you take your leg and throw it behind you. I do the standing one, the warrior. I do. You ever do this one? You ever do this one? Hold on. Do, uh, I do the tree pose for balance. You ever do. Uh, it's it's, war, it's, uh, it's uh, the girl one. Why is it going to be? 
No, I never goddess. do. It's a I goddess. Never knew, I never do the goddess, but I've always been very intrigued with that aspect because when I got out of the fucking joint, what are you doing, Ari? I'm got, I got all these ones for you. You do this one? Do yeah, that I do one? that one too. That's great. That's a good one right there. You ever do this? I call this one picking up the quarter. You bend way down, and then you don't want anybody to see you because you're a Jew, but there's a quarter down there. You want that quarter. Just don't let them see. Get that quarter, and now you're 25 cents rich. And end with some sort of flourish. Uh, <laughs> uh, I got all these moves. You ever do this one? You ever do a foot dick? And then you just like try to suck that foot dick? You can't get there. Yoga's fun. Do people actually watch this? Or do they pay you? Yeah. Thousands. No, they're just watching. They just make them do fucking yoga. I make it accessible. I say real terms. Why don't you, you know fucking, what I got this idea? you just take a fucking online class? <sighs> Me and Br- 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 Bert Kreischer, we're on, uh, we just finished that Sober October, 30 days of yoga, 15 days of hot yoga. And okay. the day after, we were one of the Joker's crews with Sal. And uh, the people there at the fucking cruise lines, they're cool. They do a bunch of comedy stuff. And they go, we go, me and Bert were like, hey, let's teach a yoga class on the deck. We know all the moves by heart. We just finished doing 15 of them in 30 days. You know? You there? And And he goes, uh, and he goes, um, yeah, so we we let it. So we just did it drunk on the fucking deck. And every time I would do this thing, every time you're like, hold something, you're like, hold, hold, you know, and you're like, and release. But instead of release, I'll just go, and fuck it. Okay, next move. <laughs> it's just fun. Yeah. And people were doing them with you? On the deck of the fucking cruise ship in the middle of the Atlantic. How many people were there taking the class? 75, 80. Maybe 100. It was great. We just got drunk. People kept bringing Burt shots. And then I'm like, oh, I'm doing this. Let's fucking do a class. So let me ask you something. Is there somewhere yeah. in your heart you're thinking of dosing Burt a second time? For Catch sure. You don't think guard? I have multiple plans? I got my mistake was not getting his wife. That way, she got upset at me because she felt left out. I think that was the biggest issue. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm not going to toast him again <laughs> unless the opportunity arises. Say perfectly. something. No, if no, you no I'm not to dose him again. It would be fucking hilarious. <laughs> like, like in a, in a bar in New York, if you got him again, that it would, would be, be. But I'm not going to do it. Be, but it would be hilarious. That I'm would be it. priceless. There was a, you know, when I really got into. When I really got fucking <laughs> fucked up on blow, yeah, there was two clubs and they were friends with each other. Yeah, one was in Houston and one was in Beaumont, and it was Pete. You remember Pete and Slade Ham, Texas Pete, yeah, yeah. and Slade Ham, and I loved them both, <clears throat> but I loved cocaine better. And you know that the week always started different. Sometimes I would go to Houston and just do Houston, but sometimes I would go to Houston and do Houston Friday and Saturday, but do Beaumont on Thursday, and then I would do weekends. So I would switch it around. It's two clubs. You could do either of them, either weekend. So I'm getting fucked up, Ari. It's 2006, and I am just a mess. And yeah. in those days, it was, you didn't know. It was whatever happened the night before. Is he going to show up? We just. Oh, yeah, that Joey Diaz? That Joey Diaz was the that worst. That Joey Diaz got me on the road. Joe Rogan only needed one opener. Yeah. All I take is one opener. <laughs> but, Joe, but he was like, well, I might not have the one opener. I don't know till I get to the airport if Joey's going to meet me at the airport. It was crazy. And it was pre cell phone too, so you could sound like he could, or it's definitely pre smartphone, but he was yeah, called, like a, he's not know, answering, he could be driving then for a reason. I didn't Pager, want nobody to Pager get a hold Joey. of Joey. We'd have to call for your spots. Yeah, we'd be like, hey, uh, this this is the comedy store. Can you please call back and get your spots? Yeah, I used to have a pager. That's why. That's nobody would call me. And yeah, he said he said he would show up and he would call like, where are you? And you're like, oh, I don't know, I'm not coming. And you're like, I'm at the airport. That shows tonight. What do you mean? I can't get somebody down to the airport right now. It's like the, we were boarding in 20 minutes. Oh, my so God. So he started bringing me in case Joey didn't come. 
<laughs> I would just MC. Or I'd middle if Joey didn't come. How fucking crazy is that? And that's how you To know. not fire you. And the response was, let me get another employee to cover up this employee. <laughs> Instead of just firing, well, he didn't like, fire me because he fucking loved me to death. I, mean, I know it's I, I got, hilarious. I got, it's, it's, and if anybody else was to do coke around him, tell uh -huh. him how pissed he would get. He, he hated wouldn't coke. Talk to he tolerated me. He just—I don't know why he loved me. I think he thought you were crazy. I still remember calling him. Like a tame him. lion. I remember calling him one morning at six in the morning, waking him up yeah. like, "Hello," and I'm like, "Hey." I'm not going. And he's like, why not? I'm like, well, I can't <laughs> why not? And he goes, like, well, I can't find my wallet. And he goes, what are you talking about? I go, I can't find my wallet. And then remember the New Year's I didn't show? And he Where was go, that? You and Duncan were there, and you're like talking, and, and, he, and you go like, you're like, yeah, Wilson? Diaz Diaz ain't coming. And Rogan's like, that's great that he told you guys, but he didn't tell me. I didn't even call Rogan. I just decided not to even go. That's how I think it was a will turn. Dog, it was so bad people wouldn't hire me. People it's not like me. it's not like he got drunk and, and wasn't as good as he could be. He he was a complete zero because he wasn't there. You can't do any worse than not there. Not there. How long did that last? Oh my he, god. Rogan wouldn't fire him. He's not gonna learn a lesson if he never gets recompense like come up and people don't learn lessons without come up and he would be like, okay, well, you're on next week. Rogan would talk to me and ask me if I was okay, and I'd tell him yes, and then I would show up. Uh, imagine if you called but into if it work, was your, like a your day job, and say, I'm not coming. They're like, okay, well, see tomorrow. if it was a tomorrow. flagrant situation, all right, so Pete. Pete was my friend. Yeah, sorry, yeah. So yeah, Pete's sorry. waiting for me <laughs> one Thursday, and sure enough, I get high till fucking 5 in the morning. I got to catch a 7 a.m. flight. Now I'm getting anxiety. I'm not going. I'm not going. I still got a gram of Coke left. I can't leave. So that that was one time. That, remember those days where you had Wednesday and Thursday, then you had the weekend? Yeah. So the first time I got Pete was like, all right, I'll see you Tuesday. Didn't show up Tuesday. I had an audition. Then Wednesday came along, and it's like, <laughs> man, I missed the flight. And the other one is packed. Okay, I can get somebody to cover for you on Wednesday night. So now you at least, you know, fuck it. Wednesday night I go out and get fucked. And they're up. like, I don't want to get in a plane. Like, what are you talking and I about? Still you have a flight. Not leaving, and him and me calling him and going, I'm leaving for the airport and hanging up, and I wouldn't go anywhere. And next thing you know, my pager would start blowing up at like... It was nuts. Like if the plane was supposed to land at 1 o'clock in Houston, it, it, that's 3 o'clock, right. you know? My phone, my pager at home would start blowing up, and I'd be passed out. It's I'd fucking be passed nuts. out from doing blow, and the pager would wake me up. And I'd wake up, and they're like like 16 mix, mix te, uh, mixed... Uh, whatever, and then I would oh, finally call him back. I think this was why even call back? Yes, Just be like he had a brief. He had a he had a cell phone. I held out till the end. Everybody had. Cell Rogan phones. had a cell phone first. He had a cell phone that you could hang up in a shoulder strap and yeah. fucking hang it up. <laughs> I I held out till the end to get a cell phone. So I remember calling Pete, and he's like, "Where the fuck are you?" And I'm like, "I'm here." My plane just landed. I'll meet you outside. I'm in gate A. Oh. And him keep calling me like, where are you? And me calling him back going, I'm on gate six. You know, and like, he, where are you hoping this would go at this point? Like, he's going to find out you're, you're was, still it, in bed. It was crazy. It was, And then I would just stop answering the phone. And then <laughs> I would get calls from all over, from Ralphie, from fucking. Cause Pete's people, calling, where are you? Yeah. Where are you? And then they fucking just finally realized I wasn't coming. So then about six months later, Slade Ham calls me. And he goes, can you work the weekend? I'm like, absolutely. And he calls Pete, and he goes, guess who I got this weekend? Joe Diaz. He goes, bro, you better get a backup. That dude's <laughs> not going to show. Slade's like, Diaz is my brother. He's not going to do that to me. Sure enough, that Thursday night I went out. <laughs> got fucked up. 
and I had a because he was my. I felt so bad because he was my buddy. I had I kept keep calling him back. I just landed, but I'm in the airplane. Hold on, wait for me. Outside. And you're still partying in L.A. Huh? And you're still partying in L.A. You're I'm, not I even. Was, I would still be in L.A. But you, you you didn't do coke in the daytime, so you'd just be sober, just sitting there like I don't want to yeah. go. Nighttime lasts yeah, a long time. I gotta time. go to battery. I gotta go to battery. I'll be right back. Keep All going. right. By that time, uh, do we do you want to pause? Uh, no, no. But by, by that time, I would be down, but I would feel so bad about myself. I couldn't. I wouldn't be able to sleep, but I would feel so bad about that. I had that. I had stayed up all night and done coke, and now I'm missing this date. I did that a couple times to people. Like if they were in an improv or like a regular booker, oh. Your chances were even less. And if you sent me a deposit, you're definitely not going to see me. What What about shows in L.A.? Like if, if someone hired you to like do a bar show or like a, a something around L.A., would you skip okay, that? Okay, let's say for some weird reason I didn't have a spot at the store. And I had three shows. The first show paid me 50. The second show paid me 100. And the third show paid me forty five dollars. That forty five dollars show had a fifty fifty shot of me showing up because I already had the hundred and a quarter. What if I bumped into the man before I had that? <laughs> I'm not making it to that thirty. It would be very rare, unless I needed weed or something. I would. It, my my life was horrible. My my comedy career was controlled by cocaine. I would never be where I'd be today if I was still doing coke. It could not have it's worked. Nuts. Did the coke it's get worse or something? Because, because you always talk about how like you were out every night, this and that. Like, at, at a you weren't a bad cokehead though, Joey. I, since I've met you, I didn't know what it was when you were doing it, but I, since I met you, I met a bunch of people who do coke all the time. And it just, your your symptoms didn't look like coke. You I weren't a, a bad cokehead. You no, wouldn't no, get in your face and talk. I took care of business first. Yeah. Business was first. You, you said you always coke? left. You want to do away. coke? You can do all the coke you want. I, I will never get angry at anybody for doing coke. Lee, you tell me you like coke. You like to eat pussy, whatever. I don't care. But as long as you're here at 7 a.m., you know, as, as long as you take care of what you have to take care of. Like, I wasn't canceling at the store in those days. Because that's like business. You got to do that, that right? That was my business. <laughs> you only canceled out Rogan because he wouldn't fire you. So you were taking care no, of business. No, no. But even when I had to work by myself, I was doing it. I was canceling on Rogan, and I was canceling on comedy clubs on my own. Yourself, yeah. You know, uh, you know, Rogan, remember when I stopped working Sundays and I would just get up on Sunday and leave? Just and gone, would, and he would get mad at me because I was trying to make a point. We're not working Sundays no more. If you book the Sunday, you book Sunday. I got a family, and I didn't have a family. I just had a girlfriend, <laughs> but I wanted to have some type of family normality in my life. You did not want to work Sundays. I did not want to work Sundays, so I stopped working Sundays. I, I like getting back on Sundays for potluck for the store. Was, I could do my spot too. Yeah, no. It was so like, I'm like, come on, let's let's leave Sunday. I can do a spot at the store. And he, uh, Rogan used to Monday, always would take spot. us, he would take us to Phoenix, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and for, uh, one of those Florida clubs. Oh, yeah, but Austin also. Austin was a Sunday. Austin was a Sunday, too. I, didn't I think like he him. switched to Thursday. Eventually switched to Thursday. Oh, yeah, because once he had the kids, I talked him out of it. I'm like, I'm not doing Sundays. And I still remember leaving him somewhere, like just not... <laughs> <laughs> I would just get up on Sunday and leave him. I can't imagine if any of my openers were like, were like, nah, I left. I'd be like, what? I might even have some respect for it, but I'm like, I'd be like, no, I mean, we're, I'm never gonna work with you again. I can't. I needed somebody there. I fucking. You I maybe get a up, local. Here's the deal. In 1999, I woke up one Sunday in Dallas. I was working the Addison. Improv, and I was working with my idol, Nick DiPaolo. And I woke up that fucking Sunday, and I said, what the fuck am I doing here? Honest to God. 
I was like, this is like beyond. Like I, I've told Lee because of, I don't mean, and, and you know more than anybody what I'm talking about. What? I don't know. I have a very, 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 very big religious background. Yeah. Food and, and, and I really believe in Sundays is the Lord's Day. Oh, there's that's, no work that's on, why you don't work Sundays? There's no work on Sunday. No. I'll tell you what my thing is, Ari. Okay. I believe that especially in the comedy that we have, in the business that we're in, there has to always be some type of normality. If not, we forget who we are. You know, when when you go home with... Yeah, no, I'll agree with that. I agree with that. You, you, need, a, you need a day I'm or two for like you, movie night. That's why I only do we five or six days to, a week. We, we had, you know, I am so... Gl- Joe Rogan got that Spotify deal because there is a God. Because if anybody knows Joe Rogan's generosity is you and I and how he took care of us and how we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Joe. Joe opened up a door for us and we ran through it. You follow what I'm saying to you? Fuck and then, him. And then we Give me do- my money. I want half of- <laughs> Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, you have to really think about got Joe deserves Joe bought me more steaks than my yeah. own mother bought me. I and sometimes still- it'd be like it'd be like it'd be like uh it, it, oh, let's it, just get a sandwich at Subway, but like there's a fogo to chow in town. There was no sa- like, there was oh. no sa- I still remember walking out of a Fogo de Chow with you in in Texas where he bought us a shot. And this is 15 years ago. Oh, yeah. It was, it was a like $450 a shot of whiskey apiece. As a fucking digestif. As he did, yeah, as an aperitif. The truck that goes by, he just called the lady over. And he goes, do him a favor, give him a shot of the best whiskey you got. And when he got the thing, he's like, Jesus Christ. It was four fifty yeah. a, a shot. I mean, that's how generous Joe has been to me. When you and I talked, I talked about this on this podcast Monday. That's why, as a comic, you have to be happy when other comics elevate. You're not oh, yeah. gonna grow if you throw hate on people. Well, he got that deal because he's friends with Dave. Same Chappelle. as Drake. Nobody There's talks always shit about a Drake. fucking excuse. Yeah. Can't somebody nice just get a deal because they work hard? Can't somebody just get rewarded? Shut the fuck up! You know, Who's but, saying that? He built the biggest thing in the world. <coughs> he's done it's something phenomenal. So shut the fuck up. But if yeah. anybody knows, I mean, he took great canvas on the road. Absolutely. What we ate, he ate. What he drank, we went first class. It was class. nuts. I never ate so good. Oh it my was God. nuts. It, I, remember, I remember you give me your first class ticket. Remember you going, you sitting in first class because I'm just going to sleep. I'm not I had respect eat. for my elders. Yeah, no, this is my boy. He used to give me his first class seat with Rogan. I mean, we had. Oh, so he did take the first class away from me? No, 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 no. He would only always get one first class ticket, an extra one. To sit with him. Yeah, and we'd switch just off. To sit with him, and then we'd switch it. off and stuff. It or, was the, just... or the UFC would get him and one companion ticket. One companion so those are both ticket. first class. So if he flew a third person, he's like, I'm not, I'm not spending the fucking 1100 on a flight. I'll spend 100 And you know what? A lot of times he did. I don't know how. I, 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 I'll never forget time, one time we did Rascals in yeah. Orange, New Jersey on the way home. We, we, were walk, we were involved in a comedic conversation. Yeah. Him and I have nothing in common besides comedy. When Joe and I talk comedy, that's why he loves me, because he knows the respect and the dedication. And uh, I was a thief that never stole a joke. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I'm a thief yeah. that never stole a joke. If anyone would steal, it'd be you. Because but, yeah. I believe this religion so much. I believe it's funny in how you see some com- people that are like, "Oh, you're just a real comic. You just talk comedy theory. You can just get into it and talk." And it's like yes. almost at any level, it's like, "Oh, you're just yes. like oh, you're just a real comedian. Talk you're just interested comedy in it. theory, and you start talking about the pause that Hicks yeah. took on that break when he took that pause. When you start talking to somebody, and, and I know that they know comedy that much, that's yeah. it. We're on to a different level now. You're not telling me that you saw what's his name special on Netflix, and it was great. 
It was when amazing. You, when you tell me that <laughs> you the saw, same words. Oh, it was amazing. When you tell me that you <laughs> saw, ponies. how do you live in that town still? <laughs> when you tell me that you saw the Bob Newhart, uh, the album I have here. Yeah. When you when you quote me a line from that and say to me the way he said it, uh, the the Bob Newhart has a bit about defending. Abe Lincoln at the proclamation. It's a it's the weirdest joke you've ever heard. I'm not giving it any justice. My point being, when you find somebody like that that you connect with at a comedy level, that's why Joe and I get along. Because yeah. Joe knows the respect I have for this whole thing of ours. This thing's to me is a motorcycle gang. These guys don't act like it because we've become other things. But to yeah, me, I didn't, lost their way. I didn't become a comic to be a fucking whatever. I became a comic to be an outlaw. Right. I'm an outlaw. Oh, it's so I weird when those people go so like corporate. Me. It's I don't so strange. Be it's like, part why of you. The, the whatever. So, yeah. You wanted to blend in with people? You want to be invited to rich Hollywood parties? This is why I, I, I don't want to do that. I never wanted to it's do that. It's not even the money, it's, it's that the, the, they all like. It's weird. You, in L.A., you get this thing where they can't even make fun of actors because someone might know someone who knows them. And they're like, well, I, then I can't make fun of a movie. And it's like, oh, you guys just, I don't know, L.A. lost its bite. Yeah, no, it's it's a different thing. But Rogan got what he got. But yeah, some he, comics are still comics there, for sure. Plenty. Us. But no, the You know comics, what's crazy about Rogan, how, how, how much he spent on us? He was making less than you are now. On the road, you know, he, he might have had like, I guess at some point he had the, the the fucking game show money, but like, still, it wasn't like he was like super rich. He was just like doing well, but like he would just throw money around. I think some weekends we made more than him. Yeah, he would. <laughs> For real, care, I've done the math. He would take care of us so much that and the the comedy freedom he gave you. It was yeah. a comedy. It was. For us, was it was, l- 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 let me tell you one of the best things you could do as a child. As a child is to go away for a week to a camp that specializes in something. Like mm-hmm. if you go to a basketball camp or a football camp or I a went, My parents camp. sent me to an investment camp. You went to an investment camp? What? Where did you go? No. <laughs> no, it's a sleepaway right. camp. So, Jewish day. But it's really weird because it's it's seven days. That's nothing... But that sport. Oh, right. Oh, basketball camp. No, I've done those. Basketball yeah. camp. So yeah. when we used to go out with Rogan, when it was me, you, Duncan, Red, Red Band, Band, Duncan, Eddie, Eddie, and Tate. Tate. It was pretty And once much, in a while, Tom. It was pretty much two things going on there. There was a, a comedy camp and a jujitsu camp. Yeah. Okay. The comedy camp we were learning was it's it's hard to believe. Like I wish we could do we could call that a tour. Comedy camp because that's what it was. Yeah. We were all on the same floor, you know, but when we'd we stay got, out late eating and fucking we'd stay out late eating, shooting the shit, just shit, talking. You know, I go to with Rogan to eat at two in the morning. And then on the drive home, he'd tell me how I have to lose weight. Then what'd you take me to eat for? <laughs> what'd you take me to fucking steak for? If you want me to lose fucking weight for? <laughs> Two in the morning steak, and then yeah, say you gotta lose nah, weight. Yeah, <laughs> you're fucking too fat. Then what the fuck did you take me to eat a fucking steak for? <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> he would always take me for the best fucking place in the city. You go with him in the city, it never ends. Like, hey, you want to get That's hilarious. Fuck, yeah. Fuck yeah, let's go get service. some Thai food and fucking whatever. And, and then you don't order just one dish. He's like, oh, I'm going to get three oh, yeah. and then he pick from there. And you dishes. get three and then pick out of that. And then he gets like a dessert. Yeah, let me get. And then he, you want half the dessert, yeah. And then after it's all done, after he pays the tab, <laughs> after he tells you he loves you, on the way out the door, he'll hug you and he'll go, you got to start losing weight, dog. And you're like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> then why the fuck did you bring me here? Why did you take me to a salad spot? You take me to a fucking steak joint if I need to lose weight. <laughs> yeah, take me to chopped salad. <laughs> I thank him a lot, and I thank you because 
We learned a lot from each other. And that and guess what, bro? Oh, yeah. That's never going to happen again in this lifetime. It was so weird. It's going on the road with two crazy good comics. And it was like just seeing the situations. Duncan and that was with like, Homo, He didn't Momo. have the whole room there for Rogan. He had a lot of the room there for him. But a lot of them was just there for Saturday night out with their friends. And so he had to deal with some fucking rowdy people. And it was like watching you guys deal with them. It was like, whoa, that's a cool way to do it. Or that's a cool way to do it. Or make friends with yeah, them. Or, it was that's the same shit I got from the comedy show later night, too. We're seeing like Mooney deal with a heckler. Or, or any of you guys. Or, or how to go hard. Or, I don't know. It's just like, it is like comedy camp. You just sit in the back and just fucking watch and then talk about shit. I still remember going with Rogan to New York with Duncan and telling Duncan that I was going to get him lined up that night with the the chinks in Chinatown to get him a shot of opium and we're going to go get our feet rubbed and shit, right? So <laughs> our goal was to get rid of Rogan. So we get to the airport, we get to New York, you know, Rogan wants to go out right away, then he wants to go shoot pool. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we're like, ooh, 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 and, and, our, and Duncan's like, I'm starting to feel tired and all this shit. And, and I'm, he, Duncan's looking at me like, let's get to Chinatown. Let's, let's get opium. Shoot. I kept making up this story. Her name is Mrs. Rogan Moore. would never go to get opium. Oh, we were trying to put Rogan <laughs> home to yeah, go to sleep. So you could. So him and I could sneak out and go get the fucking opium. But <laughs> Rogan wouldn't stop. He kept fucking shooting fucking eight ball. And we ended up go we ended up getting home like at two. And I wasn't in my hotel room ten minutes. Duncan's fucking calling me, like, are we gonna go down there and get the opium? And I'm like, are you fucking serious? You really want to go to China? Like, he really wanted to go. You know that scene, Once Upon a Time in America? Yeah. Noodles. Which one? De Niro would go to the opium den. Oh, yeah. Just in Chinatown. And just it looks so cool. It was like a Chinese tea, and the guy would give you a massage and shit. That's where he wanted to go. We had to wait till Rogan went to sleep. I mean, that it's fucking crazy shit, man. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny when he doesn't go. he didn't want to do some things. Me and Red Band went to we saw puppies at a puppy store, you know? And Rogan's like, he knew about it then before us. He was like, it's a puppy mill. They're fucking all the dogs are inbred or whatever. He was like, I can't, I can't. They're in cages. They should just whatever. Um and we were going in. He's like, No, no, don't. I can't. And we're like, fuck off. We're going to play with puppies. <laughs> like it's one time, you're not gonna get us. And we were just like in there, you can't resist puppies. That was the only time I was like, ah, dude, I'm 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 doing my thing. It was always fun though. It was always fun. Fucking crazy late night Italian dinners and and pool and drinks. Yeah, you never touched your wallet at all. God damn, it was fun. You never touched your wallet. It's, uh, you know, I hate when I read negative shit about him online. And I just want to. I'll stop writing that much. I, I want to, I want to, I want to tell people you have no idea. Yeah, that you really have no idea what you're Who talking about. Who writes negative about. stuff about him? And I don't even—that's just popularity shit. Whenever people say shit about him, sometimes, yeah, I really want to give him a them a laundry list of things that he's the done, good stuff he's done to for people that nobody knows about, that nobody even has a clue about. I love when they call him a racist. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Who calls him a racist? Or really? Some, yeah, they say he's racist. People he are crazy in this country. Up. They did a thing like they somebody put up. Somebody sent me a fucking email that the percentages of people he had on his guest, and I'm like, uh -huh. how does this affect your life? Oh yeah, it's nuts. You know, she's like, well, he doesn't put the uh, percentages of African American women. Like there yeah. was somebody who sent me a chart. You guys haven't done anything yet. Miss Pat's the only one of you done telling. And so I'm she's like, on multiple times. So the rest of you are slapping. I get to American work. Women. Well, I think he's had Tiffany Haddish on. He loves Miss yeah, Pat. He's had Tiffany on, I think. What Who are you talking right, about? Whatever. But they fucking want more percentages of shit. And all what I don't understand stuff. is why get your attention behind something you don't like rather than just try to go build up a fucking... This is what somebody... When we did my show the first year, it was just on the internet, and somebody wrote a blog... And it said, uh, this is not happening, had zero women on. And that's ridiculous. And then my manager, uh, who was producing it, a, a woman, wrote that person back and said, we had seven women on. We had seven women on, not zero, seven. And she goes, well, it still wasn't quite enough. And then she goes, why don't you spend your time promoting women? We got Miss Pat. We found Miss Pat in fucking 
the middle of the out of Indianapolis. Why don't you try, spend some time writing about how great she is instead of doing this negative American thing like I don't like this and I don't like this. Like then go do something about it. Prop up a fucking female. What are you you're shitting on Rogan because he doesn't book enough of that? Go prop somebody up. Don't complain about what's not running the right way. Who's getting hurt by him booking fucking Elon Musk? Oh, then you start a fucking billion dollar company. He'll have you on, black chicks. <laughs> start a billion dollar company. I guarantee he'll have you on. Run a double marathon two in a row and then fucking kill a deer. He'll have you on. Fuck nut. It's always a pleasure to have you on <laughs> Monday morning. We were recording? Yeah, we're recording. What the I fuck? I thought this was just me and you talking. Well, talking about what? No, you I... can't air any of that. I said some terrible things. No, we're gonna fucking <laughs> we're gonna air this shit. Who gives a fuck anymore? What are they gonna cancel? What? what are they gonna cancel? You, know what, you ever hear what Louis' joke about it was? What is it? <laughs> he said something offensive. People go, "Ooh." He goes, "What are you gonna do next? Take away my birthday?" Yeah. What are you gonna <laughs> He's do? Like, now? You already took away everything. What are they gonna do? What are they gonna do? They can't do nothing to you. They can't. They can't already. Oh, no, it's the best. It's Who so much fun. I can't wait to get back to LA and hang out. You know, it's so weird how let's let's do musical chairs with drugs one night. People at your are fucking place. dying, and they're still talking about cancel culture. Go fuck yourself. That's when I, you know we're all okay. If you're I if you're focusing on some fuck. dumb shit like that, then we're okay as a group. I don't give two fucks about what's going on. That means nobody's on, in danger. I'm excited that we may be in a uh, brand. Here's what we should week. do from now on. When people start going like, I didn't like this, I don't like that, like on comments, everyone else just respond with like, hey, dude, we're not doing that anymore. <laughs> and just have like yourself. 50 comments back. No, no, we're not doing that anymore. I'm pretty I don't excited. like what he said about Armenians. No, hey, we're not doing that. I'm pretty excited that they might. We'll find out today if I get Brea next week. Brea next week. I'm supposed to do governors in July, this, but they said they, it's no, like it a quarter this capacity. This Thursday. This Thursday coming. I'll be in fucking Brea. That'd be amazing. That'd be cool would to be get up again. Fucking listen, there's. I feel bad because it's the only thing I really miss. What's that? Is getting up. I, the socialization is tough. Go that fuck could yourself. Get me, buy me some time, but like, the not getting up is a, a real fuck. problem. Two years ago, you wanted me to put you on an island. You didn't want to call nobody back. You want to get it off the internet. Now you want to be Johnny Social. Go fuck yourself. All right. <laughs> Now you want to be fucking. <laughs> it's been three months. Now you want to be fucking. It's time to get back to society. Now you want to be the chick on the out there. love boat. What's a, what's a Julie McCoy, the chick on the love boat that used to greet everybody. She always had an idea. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Captain, right? Captain Steuben? Yeah, no. Captain Steuben <laughs> ran the joint. But Julie McCoy was a chick who when she came on, she always had ideas. Two years Remember ago. Charo? Remember when Charo was on with the fucking crazy hat? Yeah. She was on like seven times. Two years ago, you, you're done with social media. Now you want to meet people. Get the fuck out of here. They got COVID. <laughs> I met people at hospitals. Anybody who's got COVID, you got to shave an eyebrow. I'm telling you. So I know I'm, I'm doing business with you. This is going to turn into Mad Max pretty soon. They got to shave. Jay and DeRosa both had it. Yeah, they got to shoot a little fucking thing here. Michael Yo yeah. had it. A couple people had it. My heart goes out to them. This has been a fucking horrible time for a, a lot of good fucking people. And I'm happy that I loved it. we could uh, fucking bring some joy to their lives on a Monday morning, cocksucker. Yeah. A lot of those people who died from COVID were um, were the opposite party from whatever you're listening to. This party. So it was okay. Listen, God forbid, I don't ever applaud death. But yeah. what people, what they forget to tell you is, and this isn't, you know what, man? You ever see some... I saw my uncle the other day. He's 82. Ari, he looks like a million bucks. But that's because Great. he walks five miles a day, and that's because he he hits a boxing bag 30 minutes every day. That's great. And he still fucks and sucks. He fucks a 40-year-old every Thursday. And, you know, what? You, there's a way to be an old man. Your father just went to fucking Kilimanjaro or whatever. That's right. And walked it, you know. There's what are we talking about? About um, how great old people are. How great old people are. I forgot what the fuck I was going to say. <laughs> I said we just got to give them some cash so they can fucking order free delivery groceries or something. Nah, but, I don't you know. know. People who die from COVID. What I'm trying to say no, to you is, but that what about the people that were born during COVID? Listen, they never mentioned the, that in the stats. A lot of these people that died during COVID were halfway there already. That's a sad yeah. thing. They were halfway there already. COVID took what little system they had and destroyed it. 
You know, it, it really, what was the average age, 81? I don't know. I don't have the facts. I'm not a scientific guy. I just know a lot of unnecessary death came. Whether it's true, false, whatever, it doesn't matter. We're Joy, making how a much, comeback. Let, and we're coming back, and that's all. We need you know they have break. a number? They have a number of how much each life is worth. So, like, if they raise the speed limit five miles an hour, they're like, that'll probably mean, like, uh, seven extra deaths a year. And so they go, okay, let's weigh that against how much better it is for the economy to get people to work five, you know, five minutes faster. And that number they've always come up with is like, is this safety measure worth? It's ten million dollars per human life. That's about the number they decide. Is this much loss to the economy? Ten million. That's one life. That's break even. If it's ten million, one dollar, we can we can lose one person. Um, and I think they're not even looking now if it's like more or less than that. But that's how much a human life comes down to. At some point, you got to get on. We need that cash. That's the way of the world. That's a fucking cold reality of the world. And people are like, look, it sucks, it sucks. They always want to say that, but it's like, we're putting you out to pasture because we got to get back. That's all right. They already had that system, $10 million. You know what? I already had a good time. I did some time. I made a few movies. I got to do some spots at the store. Yeah. I got my That's what I up. said the other day. It's, it makes you happy. It's just daughter. like, hey, this life has been pretty fucking good. You know what, man? It's been good to me so far from here Baseball. on in. From here on in, like I was telling my friend, the other day, I can't even believe it's all I'm still fucking alive. I still can't believe it. But guess what? If Keith Richards is alive, Ozzy Osbourne's still alive and kicking, and I'm going to keep Stand doing what I'm doing. Being the vi- very, very good to me. Yep. I'm going to keep. I got my bicycle, my mountain bike. What? Yeah. You're going to come skiing with me next next winter. No, I'm, there's no skiing. <laughs> That's in my... how it's shape yours. Oh, snowboarding. Dog, Sorry. I know how rad no you are, dude. I know how you shredding are. There's no snowboarding either. At my age, <laughs> those days Well, do some done. jumps. You just fucking lost your hand. You're like a half a gimp. You can't put your <laughs> hand on a Every table. other year. I didn't every break anything last year. year. I went skiing five days. Did you? Not a single break. A couple falls. You're a fucking lunatic. I love you, cocksucker. We I got no too, dates. Joey. We got no dates, but... I got dates this weekend, hopefully, so we'll know. Can I say some, one thing? That I did start a YouTube channel, youtube.com okay. slash Skeptic Tank. Joey Diaz is on there. I'm doing live, actual video podcasts now, just like you're seeing this. So go go check it out. And and yoga and, and fucking other podcasts, too. Okay. Say hello to but your no family dates. for me. Hey, they always ask about you. They were asking about your daughter the other day. Like, how old is she? Is, is she like... She's got the thing yeah. your father sent me on her wall. What? The, the thing thank you? that you rub, you rub during Passover... For good luck. The mezuzah? The yeah, mezuzah. mezuzah. She that's took, right. So the Jews are, that's right. It's in her room. She loves it. I forgot that. he sent you that. And then she read all about it and she did a whole. You know, the prayer that's gave, in there is Hero Israel. A, I am the Lord. Gave I am one. She a whole ear beat about it. She loved it. And I'll continue with CBD line. I'll try to get him on for you. Oh, yeah. Dude, right. that fucking t- topical CBD is like a legit, real helper for my muscles. Unbelievable. I'm, the kind t- you spread right into the muscle. I, that's what I swear by. I, I'll just, I love that Dog, shit. I've been telling these motherfuckers that, that the CBD lion cream has changed my fucking life. Because you know, if you go on a long walk, you know sometimes like towards the end it's going to start getting sore. So halfway through, just spread some in where you know it's going to get sore. And then when you get back, do some more. It, it's it's great and it's legal. Bro, I, I, don't, I don't leave the house with I, everything. My knees... I rub them on my thighs. My fuck, it's fucking I wish crazy. I could show the camera how better my legs. My legs used to always be dry and shit, no matter how much your legs. culture. Maybe oh, you should, some of these cream. Moves, and you wouldn't. Oh, I do those. Those are those are fucking whatever pose. <laughs> Sit down before you break an ankle. Yogi. I love you, Yogi. Yogi. Yogi Ari. <laughs> Stay in touch, love you too, Joey. Thank you for coming on today. Yeah, of course. We're back, bitches. I hope you enjoyed that little tete-a-tete with Ari. Like I said, he's a good man. He's made mistakes. Who hasn't? You haven't made no mistakes? You know what I'm saying? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Let's spark up another fucking joint out of respect for you motherfuckers for listening today on a Wednesday, for paying attention. Mm. When my daughter eats, she's a little girl. So when she eats, she goes, mm, mm. <laughs> She makes noises and shit. I don't make noises. When I smoke reefer, this is my world. He goes, you make these noises like you're drinking a strawberry milkshake or something. This is it. This is my world. This is all you need right here. 
This has been my world since I was fucking 12. This is what keeps me sane. This is what keeps me fucking active. This is my savior. Beside Buddha, beside fucking Allah, beside God, this is my number two savior. And super bad, the cat. I missed that cocksucker all my life. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the Ari interview. I've had you long enough today. You know, I love you motherfuckers with all my heart and stuff. Uh, keep your doors closed. Be vigilant. You know, you know the fucking church rules, cocksucker. Keep your eyes open. Keep your mouth shut. Your ears wide open. And that's all you need to know. And the heart is what it's all about. If you're angry, if you're mad, check your heart. Write it out and work on it. You know, I don't know how it worked for me, but it did. I don't question my cocaine anymore. I don't question anything. It's a higher power, and uh, you got to tap into it, all right? I'm happy you enjoyed the podcast today and Monday's podcast. And that's it, and that's that. Before we leave, though, it's time. Listen, we're fucking in quarantine now, 6 o'clock. You got to have the best dick you've ever had right now. You're serving up the (laughs) best dick. You're like, your dick is Ruth Chris. You're the Ruth Chris of dick right now. Because there's nothing to do. How many times are you going to watch Ozark? How many times are you going to watch Joe the Lion? How many, th- you know, how many times can you watch fucking Wheel of Fortune and fucking all these other shitty fucking shows on TV? There's times you got to look at mom and say, you know what? The kids are asleep. Let me give you a stab. But now I got you covered. Because sometimes it's late at night. Your dick ain't working. You're a little older, you know. Listen, when I was 20, up to the time, 30, 35, my dick was always on fucking blast, double blast. Even after you come, you know how your fucking dick dies for a little while? I would come and be right back. That's when I had to just get that first horse out of there. Once I get that first shot out of there, it's all over for that pussy. I'm coming like a savage. Not anymore. I'm a 57-year-old man. I ain't got dick like that. That's why the church is talking to you about blue chew. You're like, what the fuck are you talking about, Joey? I'm talking about Blue Chew. It's a chewable dick pill, which means it works fast. Blue Chew has the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. This ain't no fucking package that you get at the fucking liquor store. Blue Chew is prescribed online by a licensed physician. And you don't have to go to the fucking doctor's office and wait online with eight other fucking idiots with mask on. This is done right from the... Right from your fucking office there, right from your house. And it ships right to your door in a discreet package. It's not gonna have like a dick on the envelope so the mailman knows you got fucking dead dick. Nothing like that. It ships right to the door, nobody knows nothing. And since Blue Shoe ships direct, they're cheaper than the fucking pharmacy. And best of all, there's no awkwardness. But Joy, what's so good about a chewable dick pill? You know what's so good about it? You could take it any time, just like that, boom, any time, day or night, even on a full stomach. And since they're chewable, they work up to twice as fast as a fucking pill. Turn your fucking little dead dick of a fucking disgust into a hot rod of fucking debt. You got to treat a pussy. This is the fucking Indianapolis 500 now. That's it. They ain't no fucking around. I'm going out heavy. And even if you still got good dick, why not fucking add extra fucking incentive? Go to Blue Chew. Dot com right now and get your first shipment for free when you press in code church. You understand what I'm trying to say to you? Free. What do you got the fuck? Free. And this is all prescribed by a physician. It's done in fucking two minutes. Two fucking minutes. You answer a couple questions. The guy pops up. Tell him and he fucking sends it to you. That's how fast this is. You don't need to leave your fucking house. Okay. So right now go to bluechew.com and get your first shipment free and press in code church. Just pay the five dollars for shipping, all right? Again, that's blue, like the color of her beautiful blue eyes. And it's chew, like when you chew a bubble gum. Bluechew.com, okay? Slash church, pressing code church, and that's it, all right? I want to thank bluechew.com, and I want to thank cbdlion.com, and I want to thank the fucking deli. Oh, <laughs> Uncle Paulie's in Beverly Hills. In Beverly Hills and in downtown. Hopefully they're fine and safe. I love you motherfuckers. I don't want to take any more of your time. I know you got other podcasts you want to listen to. Uh, so far, 
we're on for the 11th to the 13th in Irvine. Don't Brea. tell nobody. And Brea, Brea, Im- uh, Improv and Brea, the 11th to the 13th. That's the word on the street. I don't know nothing. The schedule still has me on for this Friday and Saturday. Ain't nobody going to sit in the fucking room this Friday and Saturday and watch comedy <laughs> with these fucking savages out there. You might get looted yourself. So I love you guys with all my heart. Stay safe. Stay black. Stay strong. Get it together. Don't let nobody fuck with you. And that's it. I'll see you motherfuckers bright and early Monday morning. Tip top Magoo. I'll be sending you a fucking video out this Friday. So keep your eyes open for it. Just to check up on you motherfuckers because I love you. All right. Kick this fucking meal, Lee.